My name's Annie Blight. I'm 23 years old. I came to Australia when I was one year and 11 months as an adoptee. Um, my name is Yahya Abdul Karim. I come from Darfur, Western, Sud Western Sudan. <laughs> People from all over the world immigrate to Australia for different reasons. Migrants may seek asylum to escape war or other conflicts in their own countries, or simply desire a better life and to make a fresh start. They may come to Australia for employment opportunities, better education and the chance for freedom. Australia, Australia is, one, is of one of the most culturally diverse, diverse countries in the world, with migrants representing one quarter of the population. Many of them will have the opportunity for greater lifestyles where they can build a better future for their families and themselves and ultimately call Australia home. Um, I've always known that I was adopted ever since I could remember. I was legally adopted when I was five years old. Um, I've always known that I had a biological mom in the Philippines, but I wasn't really sure if she was alive or dead. I was born premature at seven months when I was born, and that she absconded from the hospital, and so... Um, they put out like radio interviews or radio announcements to try to find my parents and try to come and claim me, but no one really came. So I was put in the adoption house, or not really adoption house, I was put in the receiving home for children, which is like an orphanage. Um, since I was born premature, they didn't really have the right facilities to like an incubator, so they had to warm up two quick bottles to one point two five litre quick bottles with hot water and wrap it around with like towels and stuff like that just so I could get warm. Um, she said I was very little and very skinny and so they keep it side by side just to keep me warm and then um, they said that when they I first started showing me because I was born at seven months and so I was two months premature they said the first signs of me getting healthier and getting a bit meatier was in my cheeks. There is war in Darfur and then when war began in 2003 I escaped from Darfur to Chad which is one of um, neighbors country mm -hmm. to Sudan mm -hmm. from Chad to Niger from Niger to Benin mm -hmm. from Benin to Togo from Togo to Ghana. So uh, I sought refugee in Ghana and then I was in Ghana for two years and a half as refugee in refugee camp. And then and then Australia government granted me humanitarian visa. So I came here two thousand seven to Australia. I escaped uh, by myself to Ghana and then I came with friends from Ghana to Australia. I, I learned basic things, very basic things in Sudan. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to Ghana, I learned a, lot, a little bit of English. When I came here, you know, I did um, Certificate 3 in English language and Certificate 4, you know. So I'm doing it step by step to get my hand around. Yes, my family is still in Sudan and then they still live in war zone yeah. in Darfur. Young, or when I was at um, a primary school, I was told that, you know, Ghana is one of peaceful country in in Africa. That information is that is information is stick on my back of the mind. 
So that's why, you know, when I escaped from Darfur, just I want to go to Ghana. I went to Ghana as asylum seekers. And then, you know, I applied for refugee status. Before that, you know, they put us in prison. You call it here yeah, detention, yeah. detention center. Yeah. So yeah, I was in detention center for four months. After that, they accept accept me as refugee, and then they sent me to refugee camp. So I was um, in refugee camp for two years and a half. During that time, you know, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees took my application and applied for to certain my countries such as Australia, USA, and Canada. I didn't have preference at that time because, you know, the life in, in refugee camp is very tough and difficult. Because, you know, you don't have, um, you don't, you, you, actually your future is uncertain. There is no choice, you know. I was forced to leave. Like, there is there's just two things, there is there's no choice. Whether you join rebel groups in order to fight government, or you join government troops in order to kill your own people. So, you know, just I decided, you know, to not join rebel groups or join government. So. It is tough choice. Mm. I've always known that I was adopted ever since I was young. Um, every time, whenever my adopted parents would fly back to the Philippines, would be two to four years apart. Um, we'd always try to track down my parents, but I would always back out because I didn't know how to accept the fact, or I didn't really understand it. Um, when we did find my like biological mom, I was 18 and we just flew in in 2008, at the start of 2008. We went to the agency to, oh well, one of the places where it helps you look for people. And um, we told them our story and she was very interested, the social worker was very interested. And so she told the director and he allowed the trip to happen. And so we first started going to the place where I was born, which is Daraga Albay in Legaspi. And um, we began asking around if they knew of a Marie Joy Malat there, which was my mom's name, which she put down on the hospital papers. My mother was one out of nine children. She was um, one out of two girls, and the rest of them was all boys. So I have a really big family in that area. And so luckily the barangay captain was married to one of my relatives and she said that I was I had similar features to one of the people in the village. We were having dinner and before dinner arrived because we went to a restaurant um, I received a text message from the social worker she's like Annie we found your mom I was like okay <laughs> I'm like mom well I said that to my doctor I'm like mom she's like what I'm like they found my mom like after dinner I couldn't really eat because I was so nervous and excited about it and um after we went back to the hotel after dinner, my mom decided to ring the social worker and see all the information about her. Yeah, she was in Manila, she was living in Manila, and that I have two older sisters and one younger sister. My yeah, we arrived in Manila, but we were walking around the terminal, and then she stood up and she's like, oh, are you Annie? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, who are you? She goes, I'm Clementine. I'm like, oh, hi. And so, like, I hugged her and she started crying. I'm like, no, don't, don't cry. I like, gave her an awkward hug, pat thing. And I met my two sisters. It is difficult, you know, to come to, you know, another country. And uh, even, you know, the system is different, culture is different language is different. You can say, you know, everything is upside down. The other thing is, you know, uh, this one is, um, you can say, a kind of individualism, you know. In Sudan, you know, you can, you know, 
go to your neighbor house, you know, even without appointment, without, you know, telephone, you know. I, 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 I take public transport, you know, um, some, tam, sometimes, you know, people ask you questions like, where, where do you come from? And then if you ask me this question nicely and friendly, you know, I'm gonna answer it. But if you, you know, ask me like, Joy, where do you come from? You know, go back, like, go back to your country, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna ask. In 2010, I got the opportunity to stay with my parents, oh, well, my biological mother and my sisters for two days. We met my biological mom in a restaurant. She came with my younger sister and that's when we went off to her place. I want to call them shanties, like little shacks or something. And um, yeah, I really didn't expect my mother's house to be like that because she said that she built it on her own because she had enough money just to build something for herself. But she's proud of it. And um, yeah, when I saw it, I was just like really sort of shocked. It was made out of concrete, um, corrugated iron, uh, wood. They only had one power supply, which they used to switch around because like they get electrical cords and then put one in and after they used it they need to put another one in just to like turn on the light or such. My oldest sister got pregnant first at it, like 19 and then my second oldest sister got pregnant at 17. I haven't gotten pregnant yet, thank god. Yeah, I just felt really bad when um, I was showing them pictures of like my room and my house because they're like, oh, where do you live? I'm like, oh, here. They're like, oh, wow, you must be like a princess. And I felt really, really bad because I was like, oh, yeah, not really. But I could tell that like, I pretty much was living like a princess compared to what they are living in. I still haven't found my father yet, which I would like to. So if you're out there, hi. Yeah, I've always been into drawing. I've always been known to draw myself. I've always drawn on other people as well. And um, which got me interested in tattoos. I thought about making it into a profession. The most important ones I have on myself would be my dream catcher, which I really like. Seeing what I have right now and where I live compared to their one, I feel extremely lucky, especially with the education and the whole job opportunities here. Another opportunity I like with Australia is that it just opens heaps of careers, like whatever you want, you can pretty much try out for. You know, my goal is improve my language and then, you know, I want to be intellectual, you know. I want to do, um, after I finish uh, diploma, I want to do international relations, Bachelor of International Relations. After that, I want to do um, international master in international law. And then, you know, after that, I can do PhD too. I want to help people, you know. I believe that, you know, I can make difference. So, and the other thing is, you know, as we speak here, you know, in that form, every single day pass, you know, men are killed, you know, kids are die of malnutrition, disease, you know. So those, those people, you know, need uh, someone to help them. So that's why, you know, I want to do, you know, I want to equip myself, you know, and then, you know, I'm going to help, you know, people over there or here. Do you feel like you're an Australian citizen? Yeah, um, I'm going to get it um, in November, in this November. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you feel like you're an Australian now, or do you think? Yeah, I'm Australian now. <laughs> <laughs>